Morning guys, welcome back to the Red Shop. Today we're gonna to be talking about thread tension and some other stuff. Y'all stick around. Last week I got a lot of questions about thread tension and how do you know when you have the right tension. Well, we're gonna get into that in just a little bit because I'm gonna start wrapping this 7.6 heavy extra fast blank here. And I'm gonna show you how to get your tension right. First thing is this is a pretty robust blank here in the butt section and I'm getting ready to start putting my guides on I told you guys the other day that you know I use the bands these bands but these are kind of a really small diameter they don't work so well when you get into the heavy end of the blank and what I did is instead of using tape this is a conventionally wrapped casting rod and I haven't built one of these in a while so I want to be able to test and move my guides around pretty freely so what you do is I have this surgical tubing you can buy it at pretty much any rod supply place and then you take your razor knife and you just slice into these rubber bands and then what you do is you roll them down on the blank just like you do the smaller ones but they go a lot further down and the further that you pull them down, obviously the tighter they get and the smaller they get. And that's what I'm gonna to use to hold on the stripper guides and the first couple guides. So all you do is slide them on and you just roll them down. That's the first tip of today. Let me get all of these on. When we come back, we'll be talking about thread tension. Don't go away. Okay. I spent the last 30 minutes getting rubber bands on, doing a guide layout, a rough guide layout, getting the guides on with the rubber bands. The stripper guide and I didn't get along too well with the rubber bands. Uh, this is a standard LZR guide train. It typically starts with an eight. I have some tens um, that I bought separately. I pulled out for this flipping stick. Got them on, did my static test, added a couple guides. Uh, this is a 11 guide guide train because it's a standard rep. I haven't shown you guys much of this build. I've uh, been working on other stuff that you guys have been watching, but this is the one that I extended from 7.3 to 7.6. And now it's time to talk about tension on your thread. Now, I've had a bunch of questions. Um... And it's hard to answer that question uh, with words. So I'm going to show you what I like. Um, it's just, everybody is going to be a little different. Um, I like the threads to be fairly tight. And it's hard to quantify that. But uh, you want to be able to move the guide a little bit underneath the thread but you don't want it sloppy loose because your tag ends will come out, your pull throughs will come out, it'll come unraveled and you're doing it again. Um, you're gonna discover what you like just by practicing with your tension. Now, my favorite carriage is this old carriage mostly because of the way the tension knob works. It's right here, I can adjust it back and forth. Um, it's, oops, it's got a spring on it there to keep the tension even. But one way I can feel the tension when I'm pulling it through the through the thread tensioner and that's kind of where I gauge it now let's wrap one here um, really quick go ahead and wrap this double footed 10 and I'll put some additional tension on because I'm going to change this tape hopefully without losing my guide okay that's better now we're going to cross over and you will hear thread pop either through your tensioner if it's too tight or when you come up on the guide foot right up on the toe it will not want to climb it'll just pop off and that will give you an indication that you're too tight uh, like I say, it's, it's going to be a personal preference for everybody. Everybody's different. But I wrap them pretty tight when I'm down on the, on the blank here. 
That's four wraps. I'm getting ready to jump up on the guide foot. And then I will pull a little thread out and back off the tension manually while I'm going up the guide foot ramp. Now see that just jumped again. And we're going to put a couple more wraps in here. Okay, so I've got these four wraps on top of the guide foot that are not quite as tightly wrapped as the first four that are down on the blank. It gives me a little bit of flexibility. And as I'm wrapping my next couple wraps, I'm using the tension from the tensioner, which is tighter than these four that see them just jump right there. I'm gonna hook that, pull it back up. I'm working these down. And everything lined up nice and straight and tight. And black on black is hard to see. It's hard for me to see it and I put my glasses on. So now, I'm going to lose th this tag in. The other thing, if you've got your thread tension set way too tight, you're going to start pushing your guides as you're trying to wrap them up the, up the slope of the toe. You will start pushing the guide towards the tip of the rod. All right, we're getting close here. The other thing that you will know if, it's, if you struggle to pull your, your end through with your line pull, you're probably too tight. But it's a fine line between too tight and too loose. So you're just gonna have to play with it. I hope that's a little better explanation than I was able to give in the emails and in the comments from some previous videos. Um, another question that came up was the colors that I used in the military ribbon wrap. I pulled those out, took a picture of them. If you guys are interested in duplicating that wrap, those are not the exact colors. They look like they are. They were the closest ones I had in my thread inventory when I was I got that question. But I pulled them out, took a picture of all the uh, colored numbers. And if you want that, just email me. I'll send you that picture. Okay, I'm going to keep wrapping this flipping stick with the bajillion guides on it and you guys get busy in your rod shop building you some rods i've got a couple quick videos planned for the next couple days we're going to do a color change video and maybe a fade wrap and then we are going to start the voodoo rods kit build now if you guys don't have a kit or don't have something ready to build go to voodoorods.com order your kit they will you know price it up around 100 bucks maybe a little under and you guys can build along with me. Mine's all here. Got the supply kit that Casey sent me. And I've got my blank and all my components. And we're going to open it up and start building. Build it in a couple videos. So, as always guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.